Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your, our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Uh, welcome back for those who have been here before. And for those joining us for the first time, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Today's uh, webinar is going to be, hey, Mac, what's new? AutoCAD for Mac 2016. And I'm very, uh, very happy to have our presenter, Jim LaPierre from Impact Designs uh, demonstrating for us today. Uh, so um, really looking forward to this particular webinar. So as we begin and fumble for my mouse with my awkward moment here, uh, let's talk a little bit about us who are all moderators today since Jim will be presenting. I'll let Jim talk about himself in a moment. Uh, my name is Volker Coco. I'm an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist in the Lake Oswego office and uh, supporting AutoCAD as well as other applications. Uh, alongside me, okay, well, not really alongside me. She's on the East Coast in our New Hampshire office is Victoria Studley, who also uh, supports AutoCAD uh, as well as AutoCAD architecture in addition to other applications as well. And then there's Naman Mysorwala, who is an expert elite uh, out of Westchester, Cincinnati, uh, who has been a great asset during our webinars. So, enough about us for a moment here. Let's talk a little bit about the Autodesk Help webinar series. Uh, and, and I'm not going to go through this verbatim. Uh, for those who have been here, uh, I think most of you know how we work and what we have available. For those who are new, um, we do have these uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars. Um, typically, they're on a weekly basis. We've taken a bit of a hiatus uh, over the last couple of months. and and just done it on a monthly basis, but uh, missing from this slide is the fact that January 17th, uh, 7th, we will begin our weekly series again uh, of webinars. Our landing page where we typically have those uh, webinars listed will be updated sometime next week with uh, at least a month's worth of sessions, if not more, so be sure to check those out. Um, you can also download our previous webinars. Uh, we do have them posted on YouTube and we do have a link in this uh, available for you to download any data sets for those uh, particular webinars. Uh, so you'd be able to follow along right with those including the script. And um, yeah, again, go ahead and take a look at uh, that landing page. We'd also encourage you to check out the AutoCAD forums for additional uh, uh, resources as far as uh, working with AutoCAD goes, AutoCAD LT, all the vertical applications. There are a lot of great people visiting those community forums, uh, people like Jim, people like Naman, and even us here in Autodesk Technical Support. Uh, also encourage you to check out the AutoCAD Customer Council. Uh, if you have any interest at all in finding out what's coming up in the next few releases of uh, AutoCAD, uh, would like to get your feedback in about what you would like to see in the product, what, you would, uh, what your concerns are, gripes, whatever. The product team is there and they're taking the input. They want to hear from you and uh, this would also give you the opportunity to test those products uh, if you choose to do so. And before we get started, feel free to leave any questions in the chat window. We'll try to answer as many of those as we can. Um, for the most part, since Jim will be doing the presenting, we will have a, a good Q&A session at the end of his presentation where we can uh, answer your questions for the remainder of that period. Uh, this session will be recorded, again, just like our previous ones. They'll be, it'll be posted on YouTube. Uh, the links for both this uh, PowerPoint slide, uh, any additional data sets, and uh, the um, uh, YouTube link will 
are available right now in that registration reminder you received, as well as uh, they will again be available in the post webinar survey, and uh, we'll plop them in our chat window as well. So before I hand this over to Jim and have him introduce himself to you, I'd like to run a couple of polls. And many of you have been through these. But our first poll here is, is this your first AutoCAD help, Autodesk help webinar? And it looks like um, quite a few of you are return attendees. It's always great to see you guys back. We do have uh, quite a few new attendees, so welcome. And we hope that that uh, this will be valuable and that you will be one of the returning attendees uh, coming up. So let me go ahead and plop the data out here. I'm going to close the poll and let you take a look at that data. So it's about 64% saying, hey, I've been here before. And 36 of you saying, yep, I am brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and throw two more out there for you. Just keep these real brief. First of all, we like to know what application are you working with in your CAD department? So we have AutoCAD, obviously, AutoCAD LT, some of the vertical applications like AutoCAD Architecture, MEP, ACAD, Electrical, Mechanical, as well as Civil 3D, AutoCAD Map, or other. With other, I'm always, <laughs> I wish we had more space. Uh, it'd be nice to see if it was a um, Revit or a, uh, a third-party vendor, a different uh, software developer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. So you can see that uh, the majority of you actually use AutoCAD. And the 33% AutoCAD LT. And then the rest is split between the verticals. So um, as we try to make clear, most of the topics that we choose to present are going to be applicable to anything that AutoCAD LT can do and up. So any of those vertical applications. Sometimes we can't work with that too well, such as in this case where we do the AutoCAD for Mac. So let's do our final poll for this session here, and that is, do you work with AutoCAD for the Mac? And that could be LT as well, so AutoCAD LT for the Mac. So about 5% of you, yes, 87 or so are saying no, and then uh, just under 10% are considering it. So maybe Jim can uh, change your mind on that. Let me close this and just share that real quick-like and give you just a moment to digest this information. All righty. So let me go ahead and hand this over to Jim. And Jim, how are you doing today? Well, thank you. So it looks like, uh, hopefully everybody's seen the, the proper screen, it looks like um, it should be up. So uh, real quickly, um, again, thank you guys for having me back on the, uh, the Build Your IQ webinar series. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the invite back and glad to be here to talk about the new version of AutoCAD for Mac. So um, just a quick rundown, I'll give you just a couple lines about me, where I come from, uh, then we're going to dive right into all the new stuff in AutoCAD for Mac 2016. Um, we've got some new XREF tools, and including uh, path mapping, we've got some express tools, some new dimensioning tools, uh, a bunch of other just sort of miscellaneous useful tools, and then some overall application improvements. So really quickly about me, I started using AutoCAD version 13 about 17 years ago, 18 years ago now. Uh, I've worked in electromechanical engineering, architectural design, telecommunications, CAD management, uh, pretty much anything that has to do with getting black lines on white paper. Uh, I am an AutoCAD certified professional and proud expert elite member. Essentially means I spend way too much time on the forums. 
and I do own Impact Designs, essentially uh, sort of a CAD management, uh, CAD manager for hire, um, going around the country, speaking about AutoCAD for Mac, AutoCAD 360, uh, general AutoCAD uh, for the PC, um, improvements and so forth. I'm also a uh, faculty at a local community college where I teach their CAD programs. I'm an author on lynda.com and the iBookstore, and I am a former genius at Apple Retail. Uh, I drank the Kool-Aid, got fitted for my pajamas and the whole nine yards, so I'm quite the, uh, the Apple fanboy. And fortunately, um, I was actually one of the first people outside of Autodesk to see and use AutoCAD for Mac way back when in 2010. Um, and this was something I had been emailing Autodesk about for about two, three years before they actually even really started digging into AutoCAD for Mac. So I was quite happy when uh, when that was released. So again, uh, what's actually new here? So the big ones uh, for XREFs, we've got a new uh, feature called server path mapping. Essentially it means that on your uh, Mac and your PC, both operating systems tend to look at their network drives in different formats. Uh, PC looks at them in a um, drive letters, so the P drive, the X drive, C drive, and so forth, whereas Mac tends to use the drive names, so there's no letters, it's just the project drive or the hard drive and so forth. So what this allows us to do, if you've got XREFs that use full or absolute mapping, so P drive slash project slash, you know, uh, 2015 slash project one, two, three, and it needs that entire path, you can now map those back and forth and say, okay, when you see the P drive on the Mac side, it's really going to be the project drive. And this way you can, you don't have to constantly look for your X reference uh, files if you're working in a mixed use environment, Mac and PC, everything just kind of works uh, better. It's also a new feature called bilayer override. We're going to go through in just a minute, and I'll uh, show you guys a bunch of actual examples and what this stuff does. But by layer override essentially means if somebody's um, changed the color of a layer that's in your XREF, or they changed the line type, or so forth, you can actually set it to be to show by layer whatever that proper layer color or line type or whatever is supposed to be while it's in your drawing. So the original file can be whatever it needs to be, but in your file where it's referenced into, it can just be by layer. So one of the biggest things uh, is the inclusion of a bunch of express tools that we've added in. So text-to-m-text, uh, text, text, uh, the breakline symbol tool, um, attributes-to-text or burst, uh, move, copy, rotate, moco row. Uh, we've got a block replace command now. We've got super hatch, which is great. And we've also got the change space command. Got a bunch of dimension improvements. Some of these uh, you guys have seen in AutoCAD uh, for the Windows side in 2016, including the new improved dim command. We've got some new text wrap features if you've got dimensions. And we also have a new layers for dimensions tool that allows you to set your layers when you use the dim tool um, so that every dimension, no matter what layer you're on, always shows up in the proper layer. And we've got some sort of a collection of other miscellaneous tools. We've got some paste improvements. We've got paste as block now, uh, paste to the uh, original coordinates. We've got some new RevCloud tools. Um, moving copying updates it has to do with the visual fidelity. Uh, we've got mtext frames, which is great if you use um, mtext frames. You want to have the box put around all your mtext objects. We've got a few other mtext uh, enhancements, rulers, and so forth. Uh, we have the new geometric center snap, which you've seen in uh, the AutoCAD 2016 for Windows. We have some new section tools that have been brought over as well. And last but not least are some general application improvements. So we've uh, got the new properties inspector, which is customizable. Uh, we've got some great PDF enhancements. Uh, with We can now have selectable text, and the PDF size has been greatly reduced. Uh, we've got some font handling improvements to help handle all those true type fonts. Uh, some new line smoothing um, to help the visual fidelity again. We've got some command line improvements with autocomplete, autocorrect. Uh, we've got the new render online tool that we can use. Uh, we've got a couple uh, selection updates, preview stuff, um, and then I'm, we're going to jump into the feedback as well so you guys can uh, tell, us, uh, tell Autodesk what it is you think about all these new changes. So let's go ahead and jump over and take a look. So uh, to start with, let's see here, uh, we're going to jump right into the Express Tools. So let's go to 
So one of the first things is uh, on the Express Tools list is text to MTEX. So right here I've got three separate pieces of DTEX. You can see they're all uh, individual pieces of text here. Up under Tools, under Express Tools, this is where all these new Express Tools are kind of hiding out, uh, including Convert Text to MText. And if you're curious, the command itself is actually the same as it is on the PC side, so TXT num uh, numeral 2 MTXT. So three text objects were removed and one text uh, MText object was added. So now, as we kind of look at this here, I've got some, I can actually get in here and use some of my formatting options. So I can uh, choose return here. I can go up and set this to a, um, I can use the automatic uh, bulleting here and run through and add, uh, separate all my notes. I've got my single mText object that's a lot easier to deal with. Uh, next up, we've got the break line symbol. So I can remember having to create blocks to do this and having to draw these out and extend them and you know just those, all those extra picks and clicks that we used to have to do to be able to make this symbol. Um, so again, under tools, under express tools, we have it right here. It's called the break line symbol. And the command, if you're entering it in the command line, is just break line. So we've got a couple options down here. Uh, which block we want to use, the size and the extension. We'll take a look at those in just a second. But essentially we're asked for the first point. I'm going to use my object snap tracking and just pick a point right about there. And I'll pick my second point right about there. I'm asked where I want to put the location of the break line symbol. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter so I can accept the midpoint. And there's our break line symbol. So that's a, a little tiny for what I was looking for in the Overhang isn't quite what I was looking for. So let's try that again and modify some of the options that we had there. So Express Tools, Break Line Symbol. And this time I'm going to type in uh, S for size. And I'm going to change this to say something like 4. And then I'm going to type in E for extension. And this is how far over the points that I select I want this uh, break line to hang over. So I'm going to change this to 2. And now I'm going to pick my same two points again, so right about there and right about there. Again, I'll hit return to accept that midpoint. And that looks a little bit closer to what I was looking for. So there's my break line symbol. So again, uh, it's drawn as a line, so it's not a block. So I can go in here and you know make edits and you know anything that I like. It's just a regular polyline when the command is all said and done. So quite happy to have uh, something like that back in AutoCAD for Mac. Next up is attributes to text. So let's see where my so uh, this is uh, also called the burst command uh, from the Express tools. Uh, essentially, if, uh, right here I've got two separate um, two separate blocks here, uh, same block just copied over, and I'm going to use the uh, explode tool just so we can see what that looks like. Actually, let me change my uh, cursor color here real quick just so it shows up a little bit better. There it is. There we are. So uh, right now if I use explode on a block, what happens is all of these attributes, everything that I've filled out in my block, when I explode them, they just go back to being attributes. Uh, I lose all the information that I'd entered in my block. Um, all my lines are just, you know, back to line segments. But again, I lose all that text that I had entered in. Uh, with Burst, which again under Tools, Express Tools, and Explode Attributes to Text, when I select my block and hit Return, all of my information that I entered in is now just regular D text. So I've saved all of that data. That's now editable D-text. I can go in, change the uh, anything that I want about it. Um, I know a lot of CAD managers don't necessarily like the burst tool uh, because of that fact that you can explode your blocks rather easily. Uh, but it is necessary in different uh, different uh, applications and in different instances. So it's always a good thing to have. Um, so quite happy to have that finally brought over to AutoCAD for Mac. Uh, let's run over back to. Uh, our other drawing here. And one of the other new ones is MoCo Row. So uh, move, copy, rotate, and scale all built into the same command. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle here. I'm going to select it, 
go up to Tools, Express Tools, and find Move, Copy, Rotate. So the first thing I'm asked to do is pick my base point. I'm just going to pick the lower uh, left corner here. And now I have all the different tools that I have uh, available to me. So I'll start with Move and just move my object over, again, wherever it is I want it. And next, I'm still in the command, so I'm not moving the object and then having to get back in the copy command, press P for previous to reselect my object, uh, and then reselect my base point. I can move right into the copy command using the same base point and start to copy my objects around. When I'm done, I'll hit return, and notice the last object that I placed becomes my default object. That's the new object that I'm editing. The other ones are just kind of here, and they're going to stay exactly as they were. And now I have my options to, let's go ahead, to rotate. Again, right now I'm using the same uh, base point to rotate my object. Now, if that's not the, uh, the uh, one that I want, I'll go ahead and uh, set this back, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here towards the bottom with base. Uh, using the base point, I can go ahead and change the base point that I'm going to be using for all the subsequent commands. So now if I do rotate, that uh, center point now is my new base point. I can type in 45 and press return, and then go right back into another of my commands. So the, the real benefit of this, again, is you're not reselecting all your objects. You're just clicking them once using that same base point, and you have all of these different multi, uh, all these multiple uh, editing options here. We've got the scale option here as well. And I can type in my scale factor, let's say 0.75, and then copy that around, jump over to rotate, rotate that back around 45 degrees. So again, all this without ever exiting the command. So it's a very, very handy little tool. Next up is block replace. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over to a block replace uh, example that I have here. So here we have fairly common uh, basic office here, conference rooms, a couple of little uh, cubicle offices here. Um, and just like anything else in the real world, uh, the boss comes in and says, you know, all those chairs that we've got everywhere in the office, the owner decided he doesn't really like those. He had to sit in one and, you know, because he was uncomfortable, we've got to change them all out throughout the entire company. So we need to go through and replace all of those. So up under tools, under Express Tools, I have Replace Block. So what this allows me to do is select the block that I want to replace, in this case, my chair block that we find right here, and then whatever block I want to replace it with. So I'm going to replace it with this much more uh, comfortable looking chair here. The thing I want you guys to kind of notice here, if you look in the background, this block is placed, uh, I don't know, two dozen times in, throughout the drawing. They're in different angles, different orientations. They're on different layers, uh, obviously different insertion points. So I want you guys to see what happens when I click OK. But before I do, before I hit that OK button, I want to draw your attention right here to this Purge Unreferenced Items When Finished. So what this is going to do is if we've replaced all the instances of that block, this will actually remove the block from the DWG file. So it'll actually purge it out of the DWG file. You may want that, you may not want that. If you don't want that, if you need that block in there for you know, some other purpose and you're not necessarily want to completely eradicate it from the DWG file, you can leave that unchecked and it'll remain in the DWG file. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there we can see all of my blocks have been uh, replaced. They're all in the right orientation, and they're all on the right layer. So it saves me a ton of work when I have to go through an entire drawing and replace that block. It's also handy if you've got a block that, frankly, just changes a lot. If we had that uh, chair and the boss wanted to go in and just edit it uh, all to heck and you know make all kinds of changes and so forth, I could go into the block editor and make all these changes, but the block would be so different. If somebody else came in and tried to use that same block, they would just see this completely different block. So occasionally it's better to just create a brand new block from the existing one, save it, and then replace all the other uh, instances of the block with your brand new edited block. So again, very handy when you've got a lot of... Uh, big drawings, a lot of uh, sweeping changes that you have to make. So I'm going to jump back over here and I want to look at one of my favorite commands that's finally been brought over uh, from uh, one of the Express tools brought over from AutoCAD on the Windows side, and that is Super Hatch. So again, up under Tools, 
under Express Tools, getting quite familiar with that location, we have Superhatch. So what Superhatch does, if you're not familiar with it, it allows you to take any uh, image, block, external reference, or even a wipeout shape and create a hatch pattern out of it. Uh, so in the past, if I wanted to you know, create a hatch pattern, I'd either, either have to go into the coding and write, write out this uh, somewhat complex uh, routine of zeros and coordinates and so forth to create a custom hatch pattern that I may only need one time. With this, I can jump right in really quickly and create sort of a temporary hatch pattern just using any of these different images, uh, blocks, references, or so forth. I'm going to use an image just to kind of highlight the utility of this. So I'm going to select an image, and I'm going to go out to my uh, desktop and find my uh, image right here. I've got a steel texture uh, JPEG here, and I'm going to click Open. So Attaching the image looks just like any of the other attach images uh, dialog boxes that we're used to. Specify on screen. I'm going to set the scale to 1. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and set that on screen as well. Uh, rotation, I'm going to leave that locked at 0 and say OK. So I'm going to place this for right now just outside of my, uh, my block area. And the, my goal is to hatch the inside of this space right here. I'm asked for the scale factor. This looks pretty good at 1, so I'm just going to go ahead and type in 1 and press return. It asks if the placement of this block is acceptable. Again, when, as you're creating these patterns, this is the origin point of your hatch. If you're trying to figure out how many tiles it's going to take in order to tile a room or how many ceiling tiles you're going to need and so forth, you want to make sure that this placement is pretty much where you want that tile to start, whether it's in a corner, whether it's in the middle of the room, so that you really get that sense, uh, that accuracy of what all these blocks are going to look like or how many tiles you're going to have in the space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and accept this one for now. And I'm asked, just like my hatch pattern, to accept the internal point. I'm going to go ahead and click in here and press return. And there is my hatch pattern. So again, image is slightly big, so it's going to um, you know, give me a little bit of a, a lag there as I'm zooming in and out. But I want, uh, obviously, it's you know, worked its way around uh, the different hole patterns here. But I also want to draw your attention down here in the command line. There's this option here called T-frames. Uh, T-frames has to do with the object uh, toggling the frames on and off. Right now in my uh, little pattern there, you can see every edge of every one of those blocks. And that might be fine if I'm trying to do, you know, again, some sort of floor tiling pattern and I want to count how many tiles. But in this case, I want to see just a consistent pattern all the way across. So I'm going to type in T-frames, and that turns my T-frames off. And now I've got a much more uh, seamless pattern there all the way across my object. So again, with Superhatch, I've got a bunch of different options up here, different objects that I can use. Um, aside from images, I can use an existing block if I want, uh, use external references, I can use wipeout patterns. And one of the things that's nice about using the existing block, I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but in a uh, traditional hatch pattern that you create, there are no curved objects. You can't actually have an arc or a circle inside of a hatch pattern. Uh, if you look at any of the coding for the hatch patterns, it's all based on line segments. And if you have a hatch pattern that looks like it might have a curve in it, if you zoom in close enough, you'll see that it's actually created by all these little series of little tiny line segments. However, using a block, I can actually go back, create a block out of a, you know, a wave or a uh, arc or a circle in it, and create my hatch pattern out of that. Um, so I can have my curves and my arcs in a hatch pattern. So this isn't a Again, traditional hatch pattern when it's all said and done. Uh, when I select these right now, it's just a raster image F reference. There's 88 of these things right now, and it is a group. So all it does is group all those objects together once it's placed them into uh, the space. So it's not a hatch pattern that I can uh, move or copy anything. If I grab the uh, uh, external uh, the polyline here, it's not going to react. It's not going to change or anything like that uh, based on uh, the different boundary edges that I've got. It's a one-time only, one-time, sh one-shot, sort of a uh, temporary, quick uh, hatch pattern. But again, incredibly useful for visuals and creating those uh, quick patterns that you really don't want to spend all the time uh, going through and drawing uh, just for one shot. So uh, one more we've got left, uh, change space. So I'm going to switch over here to my layout. And here I've got uh, my demo plan here. This is in... Uh, Inside my viewport, so obviously it's all in model space. You have this object here right now that is in paper space. 
So I'm going to go up to, uh, I'm just going to type in the command here, actually, uh, ch space. And I'm asked to select my objects. Now, right now, because I'm in paper space, the only option I have really is this guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my object, press return, and it's actually pushed it back into model space. It looks like it's gone. Uh, but if I read through the command uh, line down here and see what AutoCAD really did, it took the object, changed it from paper space to model space, and it scaled it by a factor of 48 in order to maintain the visuals. So it looks exactly how it did when it was out here in paper space. So I'm going to pull my uh, viewport out just a little bit, and there's my object. It's not out, now actually out here in model space. So if I double click inside here, now I can select it. And obviously it's rather large now because it was scaled by a factor of 48. This also works in reverse. So again, if I type in change space and decide to grab a couple objects here, I can grab multiple objects, it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and press return. And again, I'm brought back out into uh, paper space. And if I delete my viewport, we can see those objects that I selected are now out in paper space. Uh, and again, if we kind of scroll back and look here, uh, what exactly it did, uh, four objects were changed from model to paper space, and they were scaled by a factor of 0 0.02 in order to maintain that visual, so they look exactly the same. So change space, very, very handy, again, for moving that stuff back and forth if you've got something temporary. Um, I've done this quite a bit for... Uh, kind of isometric views that I want to be able to change or shade or something to that effect that I need up in paper space. And it's a lot easier than going into model space, grabbing all your objects, uh, copying and pasting them into uh, paper space, and then scaling them down to whatever factor they need to be so that they look right. It's just one quick command, uh, and boom, AutoCAD takes care of all the math for you. So very, very handy little tool. While I'm talking about copying and pasting, I'm going to jump back over here to model space and a couple other uh, kind of overall commands, miscellaneous commands that AutoCAD for Mac has improved upon uh, are the paste options. So we now have paste as a block and paste to coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm just going to grab my uh, little stair that I've got over here. I'll go up under edit and I'm going to say uh, just go ahead and copy this out to my Clipboard. I'm going to start a new drawing. And now in my new drawing here, I'm going to go to edit. And if I paste this as normal, again, it'll paste the object in and it's just kind of broken apart all the exact objects that I had, which kind of makes it a little bit difficult. Once I insert this, I've got to go back and try and reselect everything, uh, move it, rotate, and do whatever work I need to to get it in this new drawing and have it be where I want it to be. But now I can go up here, edit, and I've got paste as a block. Brings in all the same geometry, pick my insertion point, but now it's blocked in a single object. So it makes it a lot easier to select it, rotate it. I only have to select one, up, uh, one piece of geometry to be able to move it, rotate it, and get it placed where I need to in the new drawing. So very handy little tool. Another handy tool up here along with paste is paste to original coordinates. So if I want to copy something from one, uh, uh, one drawing, one DWG file to another DWG file, the only way to do that in the past was to copy with a base point, use some sort of common uh, point like zero, the origin point, zero, zero, go to paste it in the new drawing, use that same insertion point, zero, zero. It's a lot of clicking and, uh, and typing and so forth. So if I can get away with doing that all in just one command here, it makes my life a lot easier. So again, it's just the individual geometry, but it's in the exact same location as it is over here. So from the original to the new drawing, copied to the exact same location, all the exact coordinates. So again, very handy little uh, paste improvements. These are again tools that were brought over from the, uh, the Windows side that have uh, been highly requested. So very glad to have them over here now. A couple other commands. Uh, let's move on to the dimension command. So uh, up here under the annotation uh, tool set here under the tool palette, we have the new dim command. So this isn't, uh, it's got a little starburst there. Again, it's very similar to the Windows version, but I can start the dim command and instead of having to pick if I want linear, angular, 
uh, baseline, ordinance, uh, or anything else, all I have to do is actually hover over the object that I want to dimension. In this case, if I pick my, uh, my point here, and I'm going to turn off my object snaps here just to make this a little bit easier, I can actually select the line segment and create my text there, or create my dimension. Uh, again, I'll start the command, hover over my object, it'll select it, and I can draw my linear dimension. Now, I don't always want to just be able to select my object. Maybe I want the distance between two objects. So I can select my object, first object here, and then go up and select my second object, in this case, a parallel segment, and get my dimension between those two values as well. So uh, it also works, uh, again, with, uh, I can use uh, radius commands here. Again, it knows that a uh, an arc over here should be a radius command. Let me uh, jump up here real quick into my dimension styles here, and I'm going to up the size of this. Um, actually, let's use this uh, type here for my new dimensions here. Set that as current. And let's get rid of these guys and just try that one more time, make it a little bit more obvious. There we go. So again, I can select my, uh, my radii. It also knows that holes should be diameter. And the nice thing is it keeps me in this dimension command until I hit return or until I get out of it. So I can go through, pick my points, and just really quickly knock out my dimensions here. without having to go back and you know pick which dimensions I want, which tool I want. Uh, another handy tool in this new dimen uh, dim tool, if we read down at the command prompt all the way down here at the bottom, we've got uh, angular baseline, so I can choose a specific one if I really want to lo only look for you know angular dimensions, but I can also, over here, choose my layer. So I'm going to type in L for layer, and I'm asked to uh, enter the layer name that I want to use for all of the dimensions that are used with this tool. So I've got my dimension layer up here, zero dash dim. So I'm going to type that in and say uh, enter. And now again, I can go back out and start using my dimension tool. So notice my current layer is still layer zero, but every time I create a new dimension, it's going to be on the right layer. I can jump out of this jump into my line command, and we can see again, I'm in the, the uh, layer zero here, but as soon as I jump over into my dim command, I'm back in the proper layer. Now for the angular dimensions, I can also select, uh, instead of selecting two perpendicular uh, objects, I can select two that are at an angle and get the angular dimension between those guys. So new dim tool really handy allows you to really jump through run through and uh, really knock out the dimensions in your uh, in your drawing and then you can always obviously go back over um, all your uh, dimension tools are still over here they've just been moved over one spot uh, but they're all still here and I still have all my continuous baseline all my other dimension types that I want to use so quite again quite happy to see that come over from 2016 uh, on the Windows side Another handy tool in the, uh, the new dimension uh, that has been brought over is the text wrap. So if I have um, a lot of text here that needs to be inserted, obviously really don't want all that stuff on the same line. And I can press return and try and you know, do this for myself and you know, figure out exactly where I want it to be and where I want those, uh, those line breaks to be. But with the new version, I can actually set the text width and let AutoCAD do all that work and all that calculating for me. So when I'm done, I hit save. Let's pull that guy out just a little bit. Again, I can double click in this and actually adjust that to be whatever it is I want it to be. So this new text wrapping feature in Dimensions, obviously very, very handy tool. Some other uh, annotation tools that we get now is the new, uh, sort of an updated revision cloud tool. We can see this over here under the, uh, again, I'm under the annotation tool set here. 
all the way down here is the new rev cloud. So instead of just a freehand rev cloud like we've had you know, up till now, I've now got a polygonal and a rectangular rev cloud. So I can pick rectangular and just draw a rectangle just like I would any other rectangular shape. Obviously it looks a lot cleaner than some of the freehand ones that I would be able to do. Uh, a lot more, uh, again, a lot cleaner, a lot more um, uh, symmetrical but it also gives me the benefit of remembering the points just like a regular rectangle. So I can actually go in here and move these grips in order to alter the rev cloud. And traditional rev clouds years ago, each one of these was a separate little arc and I could pick one and you know uh, make it larger. It wasn't quite as easy to work with. Also, again, is the new polygonal one. So I can pick uh, my points here. I'll pick my first point, my second point, and I'm immediately given uh, sort of this uh, enclosed area polyline that's now my rev cloud. I can go in and add as many of these as I want, press return when I'm done. I also have a, um, again, when this is all done, it's uh, saved as a polyline, but I still have all of my vertices here that I can really go into and start to work with. Still have the uh, classic uh, freehand tool here, so I can kind of draw out my little tool here. It's all said and done. Again, this is the older uh, version of the, uh, the Rev Cloud tool, so kind of get some grips here. But again, way more many, uh, way more grips here. A little bit harder to really modify and work with. So with the new tools, much easier, much more fluid. And personally, I always find it a pet peeve when people have these kind of freehand Rev Clouds that uh, not really sure how they drew them or if they kind of uh, dropped the mouse when they were drawing them or, or what exactly they did. So much more professional uh, rectangular rev clouds now. When we get in the command, down at the uh, bottom here we st uh, in the command line, we still have all the regular options that we're used to. Uh, we've got the arc length that we can change. We can still choose an object uh, to turn into a rev line. So again, if I've got a regular polyline here, make it a little uh, free form here. And I'll close that. I can go back into the Rev Cloud tool, and uh, I'll choose O for object. Select my object, and uh, I'm going to accept that. And there's my polyline. So again, very very handy uh, tools. Very uh, what, much what we're used to uh, from the PC side, but these are a lot sleeker, a lot more professional than uh, what we were able to do before. So another kind of visual fidelity thing that's been added in here is the, uh, uh, it's called the, it, there've been some move and copy updates. Essentially it's a better visual uh, experience when you're moving and dragging stuff. Used to be in the, uh, if you had a lot of stuff that you were grabbing, if I grab all this stuff and I want to go ahead and move it, uh, I might get a little bit of stuttering. There was a lot of redraw or regen effect as I was moving this stuff around. And when you're moving or copying something, a lot of times those are very visual processes. I need to see where it is I'm moving the stuff to, where I'm copying it to, and so forth. So now uh, AutoCAD regenerates much, much faster. So I don't uh, lose that stuff and I'm not, you know, moving, waiting for it to regen, moving again, waiting for it to regen, and so forth. So a lot smoother, a lot uh, more fluid. So uh, a couple other uh, visual uh, improvements here. Those are, um, well, actually, let's jump over to mText real quick. So I've got my mText down here that I had created previously. And if I uh, select my mText, I go over here and I look at under my Properties Inspector, scroll all the way down here, I've got a new toggle button right here called Text Frame. Uh, all I have to do is turn that on, and now I've got a text frame drawn around my text. So I can control that just by grabbing the grips and moving them around. Make this text frame as big or as small as I want it to be. And if I make it smaller, the text will just kind of wrap itself around. Personally, I find this incredibly helpful when I'm working in uh, paper space, when I'm documenting uh, architectural plans and I've got all those room names and I need to run back and create all these rectangles around them and they're all different sizes. Uh, the text is different. Obviously the word bath is different than the word living room uh, and I had to go through and stretch all my rectangles and all that stuff. This makes it uh, the process a lot easier. All I have to do, start my M text. This one's rather large. Uh, pick my opposite uh, corner, 
I'll just use right about there. And let's type in bath. And I'll click save. I'll select that text. Scroll down here again to text frame. And there's my text frame for it. If I copy this over, I'll double click inside. And this time I'm going to change this to, let's say, living room. My text frame obviously updates itself right around my text. So saves you those extra picks and clicks. Again, some of this stuff may seem a little, oh yeah, of course, but uh, for coming from a drafting perspective, when you're going through you know, 30 or 40 different rooms in an office building and you've got to label each one of these with a different number, different employee's name, little stuff like this can really be a time saver. Another feature in mText, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here, is a format painter up here up at the top. So again, if I've got a couple different uh, types of uh, uh, text up here, I'm going to jump over to, let's say, dimension style. I can grab this text here, and I'll make it bold and italic. Um, I've got a strike through option there and an underline option there. So I've got all these different things applied to my text. I can select the text, click on match, and then select the text that I want to match it with. And it takes all those properties and matches them to the other text. So again, little picks and clicks, little things that just kind of speed up uh, the overall process. Let's see here. I uh, still got a lot to go through, so I'm going to, uh, I know I've been going through this rather quickly, but again, if there, this is being recorded. If you want to go back and kind of watch this in slow-mo, uh, slow me down a little bit, that might be uh, rather useful. But uh, again, I've just got a lot of new features here that I want to get through and cover. So one of the new object snaps that we have now is geometric center. So I'm going to turn on my object snaps, and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, go to draw a circle here. I've got all my normal stuff here. I've got my endpoints, my midpoints, but now I get this new geometric center option right here. It allows me to really quickly go right to the center of an object. Again, it doesn't matter what the shape of the object is. So if I need to put something right in the middle of this guy, there's the geometric center of the entire object. So brought over from 2016, but a very, very uh, useful little tool there. It saves me a lot of the um, M2P command uh, that I'm used to, um, typing in that M2P uh, option. So M2P from here to here, still getting that same bet, uh, point. Now, one click, and I've got my uh, centered circle there. Jump over here, um, minimize some of this, and let's open up the section drawing. So this is the only tool that I'm aware of so far, um, and actually in the entire new features uh, sort of setup here, that isn't going to apply if you're using AutoCAD LT. So AutoCAD for Mac LT, this is not going to be um, as, uh, you're not going to be able to use this uh, tool uh, as you, they don't actually support anything in 3D and AutoCAD LT. So uh, for a moment, um, Take a break, uh, stand up, do some exercises, wake, wake back up before lunch is over, and I'm going to run through this real quick for everybody on the full version of AutoCAD. So up under Draw, 3D Modeling, we have the section plane. And this the tool itself is nothing overly new. I can pick my plane, and I've got my uh, select it, and I can move it around. The big improvements now are the grips have been moved, so they're not always uh, on top of each other. It makes it a little bit easier to kind of work with, so I can grab the grip drag it through my object in order to create my section plane here. The uh, flip tool, the little flip grip there, a little bit easier to access. Again, they're not always on top of each other the way they were in the past, uh, so a lot of welcome improvements there. And the big new one also is a new boundary tool. So under the little dynamic grip that we get right here, we've always had plane, we've always had slice. Now we have the boundary option. So when I select this, I'm given a secondary section plane here, and it has nothing to do with the top to bottom. It's only how far uh, across this piece that I want to have my section. I usually describe this as something like uh, a slice of bread out of a loaf. So I can grab the little uh, grip here and actually slice from the front to the back. So I can end up with just the uh, part of this that I want. I can grab this and move it in, move it out and get more or less of the object. So it's completely independent from the main plane here, but it just sort of gives me those options of left to right and to create my 
slice up uh, here as thick or as thin as I want it to be. I don't know about you guys, but I like a, a Texas toast, so I like a nice, real thick slice of bread. So this allows me to, to get that and uh, work with that. All right. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the uh, things I was quite happy about finally, and it's something that AutoCAD for Mac has struggled with since its inception, is working with PDF files. Uh, the PDFs that were created in AutoCAD for Mac were usually a lot larger than the ones created on the Windows version. Uh, and um, when they were created, the PDFs were actually rasterized, so you couldn't select the text. There was nothing vector uh, really about them. They were all just one big sort of image. Uh, so right here I've got two PDFs. This one was created in AutoCAD for Mac 2015. This one was created in AutoCAD for Mac 2016. Real quickly, when you look at them, you can see that essentially uh, same file, nothing overly uh, different here. Everything looks pretty much the same, but we can see the size difference here. So 2016, that file is less than two megabytes. In 2015, that same file, same settings, created the same exact way, is actually seven and a half megabytes. So you're talking about a, you know, a little over a third uh, of the size that it used to be, or that it was previously, actually just below a third. So um, again, much, much better. And the fidelity of these is a lot better, and the functionality of these PDFs is a lot better. So in the old version, I'm gonna open up this PDF real quick here. So again, if I wanted to uh, select my text here, if I try and select any of this, I get everything. It's, these aren't uh, selectable text objects, they're just one big raster image. But with the new 2016, if I open up that same file, I can now actually go in and select and copy my text out. So I can go in here, copy it out, paste it into another file. This is really useful if you've got a bunch of blocks or uh, a bunch of notes uh, that you want to pull out into another file. So again, visual fidelity a lot better, file size a lot smaller, and uh, selectable text now. So PDFs drastically improved from the previous version. So again, very, very uh, fortunate to see this now in the new version. And jump back over here. So uh, just a couple more quick things here. Uh, font improvement. So uh, the new uh, AutoCAD for Mac 2016 uh, handles uh, true type fonts a lot better. Uh, the command, if you want to uh, see exactly what that's doing, is called DT text. So uh, DT T E X T. Um, what this allows you to do if it's turned on, if it's the values one, it's turned on, and it's essentially trying not to, um, it's trying to display all those true type fonts in a much more efficient way, so they're not constantly, uh, you know, stuttering and regenerating and so forth. If you find it's got an adverse effect on your machine somehow, or uh, you're not liking it, you can always type in, uh, type in the system variable and just set it back to zero, and it'll turn that feature off. Another uh, feature that we have is the new line smoothing system variable. I've kind of copied it right here. This is the exact system variable that you want to type in. But I'm going to zoom in here and we can kind of, uh, if I regen this, you can see this is a very nice smooth uh, curve here that I've got. I'm going to type in line smoothing and I'm just going to turn it off. As soon as I do, you can see this immediately becomes a lot more jagged. Uh, it's a little bit less stressful on the system, but the visual acuity of this, the visual fidelity, is a lot worse. It looks a lot more jagged, a lot more old school. So if you go back in, turn that on, and again, as I hit return, just watch the edges of that curve smooth themselves right out. So again, that's the system variable right there is line smoothing. Uh, and it really only works, uh, just in case you're curious, it only works right now in 2D wireframe visual style. So if you're working in 3D, it's not gonna do quite as much, but if you're in 2D wireframe, it's going to help out a lot with all those curves and, uh, and curve shapes. All right, some command line improvements. Command line, undoubtedly my favorite uh, feature of AutoCAD. It's one of those kind of holdover DOS things. I just love the programming interface of it. It's the communication center. It's how AutoCAD talks to you. I just love that feature. And now it's obviously gotten even better. If I right-click down here in the command line, obviously I can see the... Uh, previous commands that I've entered in. I can run down through them and select one. I can copy the history of my commands out, uh, paste a value to the command line. Again, most of these are pretty straightforward, but I've got some new input settings. So autocomplete, autocorrect, search system variables, and mid-string search. So autocomplete, if I start to type in something like li, it'll know to go in and search for the line command. 
if uh, the autocorrect, if I type in something wrong, if I type in L-N-I-E, first uh, option that's right there right now is line. AutoCAD knows what I was looking for, that I was looking for the line command, and corrects me. So I can just hit return, and I'm in my line command. Midstring search, which was one of the other ones that we saw, I can actually, if I don't know the letters at the beginning or if I'm missing some of the letters at the end, let's say I want to get into the render command, I'm going to type in N-D-E-R. I skip those uh, first couple letters there. There's the render command. So it's searching every grouping of letters, no matter where it is in the command. So I've got render there, render there. So again, that's the mid-string uh, search. All right, uh, render enhancements. So um, I'm just going to kind of mention this one uh, just because it's kind of hard to demonstrate. In the new AutoCAD for Mac 2016, uh, we have the option to render online. So it uses your Autodesk, uh, your A360 account, so make sure you're signed up for that. But it'll actually allow you to take a very, very complex model that you want to render, ship it off to Autodesk, let them do all the rendering for you, and then they'll send you back the uh, finished rendering of the finished image. So instead of your computer chugging along for two, three hours or overnight with its you know, quad-core processor, you get an entire warehouse of computers that are all working just on your file. And I can attest to this, what might have taken hours on my machine literally takes minutes uh, on their machine. So if you're trying to modify that, um, that file right before the customer shows up and you don't have time to uh, create that really nice photorealistic uh, rendering, send it off to A360 to do the rendering online. You'll get it back in a couple minutes, depending on the size and the settings, and you can uh, still make your meeting in time. All right, uh, last few little things here, I promise. Um, these are some new system variables that we have the options of selection effect, pre-selection effect, and selection effect color. So right now, if I select my uh, objects here, essentially they've made it a little bit more obvious that things are selected, especially if you've got overlapping objects. Uh, they become a little highlighted. I get this little kind of glow about them, and they thicken just a little bit. If I turn off that value, so selection effect, I'll turn that off, and I select the same object, I just get my dotted lines. So again, a little bit less taxing visually, but not quite as obvious. If I've got a lot of hidden lines, it's not as obvious that uh, which ones I've selected. Uh, Pre-selection effect. Right now, if I hover over an object, again, it sort of tells me what it is I'm going to be selecting. I've got the little uh, highlight there, and it thickens the object. If I type in pre-selection effect, I'll turn that off. It simply turns that off. If you ever have a um, or that effect off anyway, it just kind of uh, subdues it just a little bit. Uh, the last, uh, last one here is selection effect color. If you want it to highlight in a slightly different color, Let's see if I can type properly. And uh, instead of uh, color zero, let's do, let's say color one. And now, and let me turn back on my selection effect. So now if I select this, now it's highlighted in more of a red tone. So again, just visually, whatever's gonna make it more obvious that what, uh, what you're picking out. So I think that's the just about all of the new uh, enhancements for AutoCAD for Mac 2016. Um, uh, again, obviously, there's still some stuff that hasn't been brought over, but this is a huge update. Uh, I think there's like something like 35, 40 individual uh, functions or uh, system variables and so forth that have been brought over. So um, a lot of uh, cool stuff to take a look at. Unfortunately, there's still a fair amount of things that haven't uh, been brought over quite yet. Um, the reason I show this, uh, these are all the features right now that the PC version has that the Mac version doesn't. Um, and I want to kind of create a little bit of a poll here. Which one of these uh, features is the most important to you? If there's one of these features that's preventing you from using AutoCAD for Mac as much as you want to use your, uh, your new iMac to run AutoCAD, but you're just missing one or two of these features, Speak up about it. Let people know. If you go out to the uh, AutoCAD, the Autodesk forums, there's a separate. Uh, we've got a separate um, forum here just for AutoCAD for Mac. So again, I can attest that I'm on there quite often. I know a lot of the programmers and a lot of the program managers for AutoCAD for Mac are on there quite often, looking for different. Um, suggestions and looking, for, trying to gauge what people, what's most important to people. So again, if you're really trying to uh, get up there and see some different stuff, that's the best place to go to make your voice heard. 
So I think that's everything for me. So uh, if I can be of any help, if you have any specific questions, I know we're going to do a little quick Q&A, but if you think of something two weeks from now and you uh, have a question you can't seem to find an answer, feel free. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter, Facebook, email me. Um, if you're interested in learning more about AutoCAD for Mac, I have a bunch of courses on lynda.com, which is a great uh, learning website. And um, I'm, I'm going to have a new new features for 2016 guide uh, in the iBook store coming up very, very soon. Um, it's been submitted. I just got to get it uh, approved and published, and then you guys can have a little bit more of a printed copy uh, of what we went through today. So I think that's it. I'll uh, switch it back over to Volker if you have any questions or if anybody has any questions or how we want to finish this out today. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, can you hear me, Joe? Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thought maybe I was still muted. Hey, thanks for the uh, great presentation. I'm going to uh, flip it over to me right now here. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm glad you gave your contact information, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have um, any additional time left for um, uh, Q&A. Uh, but it was a great presentation. I'm glad you gave your information there where people can contact you and maybe follow up. Again, this recording itself will be posted on, on YouTube. Uh, some additional resources, and then I'm going to uh, say goodbye, I think, <laughs> just because we're out of time. Uh, this PowerPoint deck that you can download uh, with uh, Jim's information and our information does have some additional resources. So one of those would be the Autodesk AutoCAD for Mac uh, uh, web page on AKN where you can find tutorials, other resources, and of course the discussion groups. Uh, the AutoCAD blog, blog also covers uh, some AutoCAD for Mac functionality. And, of course, there's Autodesk University, where uh, uh, there were a few sessions taught on AutoCAD for Mac, as well as other Autodesk applications. So great resources for you to check out. But we do have to go. We are running past the hour. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you guys having taken your time and having attended this webinar. Um, I really appreciate uh, Jim having uh, joined us today, as well as Victoria and Naman. Um, and we hope to see you next week. I wish we had more time, but be safe and enjoy. <laughs>